Okay, so the first thing that you're going to see when you open up your Procreate app is this gallery feed. It's not going to look exactly like this because this is all my artwork. It will have a few random pieces that have been made by other people that are just generically included. But over here, you have these options. You have select, which means that you can select a piece of your artwork and you can, um, you can if you select more than one, you can stack them together, which kind of puts them in the same kind of folder together. You can keep different things themed drawings together this way. I do this with things like tutorials. You can also preview the artwork, which means it comes up on the screen, but you don't actually go into the canvas. You can also share the artwork. You can duplicate it in case you want to replicate things. I duplicate things like this if I am making stickers or prints or needing to change something around that I don't want to alter on the original drawing. Or you can delete it, which means it will be gone forever. You can also import um, anything that you've downloaded to your files. You can also import a photo. This plus symbol over here is how you're gonna get to your canvases. I have an insane amount of different size canvases that I've kind of accumulated over the years. Because I post on Instagram a lot, the main ones that I use is this square one with an sRGB color profile. I also do 4400 by 4400. This doesn't give me very many layers and also depending on the iPad you have will depend on how many layers you get for each canvas size. The higher quality the canvas, the bigger the canvas, the less layers you are going to have anyway, but with more storage on your iPad, then you'll be able to have more layers. Another one I like to use for Instagram is my Insta portrait one. Again, I use RGB profiles for color because this is best for digitally online and for this i think what i did is i looked up what the instagram portrait dimensions were and then i times it by like three so that it was a bigger canvas so therefore better quality when you go to make a canvas you can pick the dimensions you can pick the dpi i tend to go for either 300 or 600 this kind of stuff will change how many layers at maximum you can have which you can see here then next you have the color profile, so you've got RGB or CMYK. I have used CMYK before so that I can manufacture my products, but to be honest, I've gone away from that now and I just use RGB. So the main one I use is the standard one that, is that it selects for you, and that's just because I don't want to mess around with it and I don't know what the rest of them mean. You can also affect your time lapse settings for each canvas. You can have like really amazing quality, good quality. Then you can choose your canvas properties. Do you want a background color? Do you want the background hidden? Once you've created your canvas, you will be in this view. And we're just gonna run over what everything is. So we're gonna start over here. You have these sliders. This slider at the top determines how big your brush size is going to be. This slider here determines the opacity if that brush has that feature. Brings this little square here, brings up your menu. And you can change all of these around to do different actions. All you've got to do is hold down on what it is and change it around. If I wanted to go into the brushes that I have made these selections to be, I can also change which brush I want to show up in those sections. You can also name your menu and add different menus. So the first tool up here is a little wrench and this gives you lots of different actions that you can do. You can insert a file, a photo. This is also where you add text. We go into text, then you can also see all the different fonts it comes with and you can also import your own. You can also change the settings of these fonts and make them however you want them to look. You can also copy the entire canvas and then paste it onto a new canvas if you want to. Next you have the canvas option and this lets you change the size of the canvas. You also have animation assist which means you can animate a little gif or something of that nature if you want to. You can also turn on the drawing guide. You have four different options when it comes to drawing guides. You have the 2D grid which you can change the thickness, the grid size, and the opacity. You can also turn on assisted drawing. Assisted drawing will let you follow the grid exactly, and it won't let you deviate from that. The next option you have is isometric. Again, you have assisted drawing, perspective, assisted drawing, and symmetry. You have different options on what kind of symmetry you can use. 
And with all of these, you can also up here change the color of the drawing guide that you use. Then over here, you can add a reference into your canvas. This can be your canvas. It could be an imported image, something like a draw the same style or something like that that you need to look at, or it could be your face. You know. You also can flip your canvas horizontally, which is very good for seeing if you've made any mistakes or if anything actually looks wrong or right, and vertical as well. You also have the canvas information here. Here you can title your artwork, you can add a photo, you can add a name, you can sign it. I like to do this with my brushes, which you can also do this kind of thing as well. It tells you when it was created and when you modified it. You can go into the dimensions. However, you can't actually change the dimensions in here. You can go into the layers, you can go into the color profile, you can go into the video settings, and you can go into the statistics, which is my favorite part. This tells you exactly how much time that you've spent drawing your artwork, which I love to look at. The next thing in the actions bar is share. This is essentially where you can just share your artwork to um, different, different devices or via email and it brings up all these options. The next thing we come to is video. Here you can export your time-lapse video and you can choose either the full length or 30 seconds. You can also turn off and on the time-lapse recording. You can also see a time-lapse replay and you can hold your finger on the screen and move it up and down to see exactly what you've done. Then we move on to preferences. First preference is a light interface. I personally really like the light interface, but I've gotten very used to drawing on the dark interface. You can also use right hand inf interface, which is something I haven't thought about actually putting on before, but is very useful. You can also have your brush cursor visible. You can also project the canvas onto another screen. It gives you all these different kinds of settings that you can play around with. But one we're going to look at is gesture controls. Essentially, gesture controls gives you all of these different options and all of these ways in that you can kind of like fast track what you're doing. It tells you exactly what each thing will do. So if you want a certain setting to do a certain thing, then this is where you would go into and you would try to change that around. The one thing that I like to include is on the eyedropper, I like to have touch and hold activated. Another thing that you can do, which I will show you very soon, is quick shape. I have draw and hold on to make a shape. So if we go into the canvas here, and if I was to make a circle that was very messy, but then I hold, it comes up with eclipse created. Then you can go in and you can edit the shape, either freely or you can choose circle. You can do this with other shapes as well. And then I like to have this on to have the quick menu activated, which is what I showed you before. You can also go into full screen of your artwork and I like to do this with a four finger tap. I think this is the generic setting anyway. Basically the tap is that, but you can choose anything. You can do a three finger swipe down, um, touch the screen. Again, you can do this with clearing a layer. You can do it with copy and pasting. Now, this is the part that I really enjoy because when I first got my iPad and I first started drawing on Procreate, the one thing that annoyed me very much was every time my skin touched the screen, it would mess up the drawing somehow and it would recognize that as a drawing. So I disabled my touch actions. So only my finger taps that I have enabled will actually work. So if I was to touch the screen in any other way, it's not really gonna do anything. You can change all of these settings around to make it customizable to you and make it easier for you to use. I have brought in this artwork of mine to kind of show you what we can do here. So you can change the hue, saturation, and brightness. You can make it the entire layer that you're gonna change or you can use your pencil. Basically what this means is you select a brush, say I was going to change a hue to something like this, then when I paint on it, it's going to change it to that hue. Here you can change the hue, of course. You can change the saturation. Here, I forgot to show you before, are your undos and your redos. Next after that is color balance. This is obviously where you can change the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Again, you can layer select or pencil. Whatever you have selected is what you are going to be changing around. Next is curves. I am not too familiar with curves, so 
if you do know, then you'll obviously have an idea of what you can do. The next is gradient map. I really love gradient map. It gives you some kind of gradient to use and can give a different effect to your artwork. You can also create custom gradients and that's where you go into that plus symbol. You can also make lots of different areas that you can gradient. You can also bring up the harmony section and all of these different kinds of palettes and things. Next you have Gaussian Blur. Again, you can do layer or pencil. To change the percentage, you just move your finger up or down. And then when you select pencil, you can also change the blur. And you can also change it before and after you actually paint onto it. After that, you have motion blur, which is a different kind of blur. Then you have perspective blur. After that, you have noise, which you change the percentage again with your finger. And you have different types of noise. You can scale this so that it gives you a better look. For this, you have sharpen, which again, you can change here and it will sharpen your image. Then we have bloom and again you can change these different settings. Next we have glitch which is kind of cool and again you can change how you are going to do it. Next you have halftone which is a kind of pattern. Then we have chromatic aberration and it gives this different kind of look to the drawing which you can again change around. Then we have my favourite tool possibly ever which is liquify. Now I don't really use these other kind of options but we are going to look into them anyway. The main one that I use is push. You can change the size here, you can change the pressure. This is really good if you want to change features or move something in a different way. For instance if I wanted to make her mouth wider then I could do this. One thing to remember when you are doing something like this with liquify is that it can make your lines blurry afterwards. I got lucky with this time. You can also have twirl right, which does a different, that kind of effect. You have twirl left, you have pinch, which makes something smaller. You have expand, which makes something bigger. You have crystals, which gives this effect. You can have edge, and you can have reconstruct, which I'm not sure what that does. You can also adjust the amount and the strength after you have done your liquify. Then next we have this kind of lasso tool. I don't know the technical name for this tool, but I call it a lasso tool. It's essentially how you are going to select things. And then lastly, we have the selection tool. This tool allows you to move around the image. You can either do this uniformly or you can do it freeform where it doesn't keep it the same size and width and height. You can distort it by dragging one corner or you can warp it by changing the different sections. This is also where you go to include snapping or no snapping. Snapping just gives you these um, angles and lines. For instance, like this, if you wanted to do four images onto this canvas, then you would know that that's where it needed to snap to. You can also do flip horizontally, flip vertically, rotate. Once you've been through all of those settings up there, it's time to move over to this side. So this is your brush library. You have a bunch of different brushes that come with Procreate, lots of different things that you can use. You don't necessarily need to download any. As you can see, I have downloaded a bunch and I have also made a bunch of my own packs. In here, you can make your own brush as well. You can also import your brushes from here. You also can drag down here and, and you can make your own brush pack and after this you can also rename it, delete it, share and duplicate it. You can also drag different brushes to this. You just need it to highlight over the brush pack and go like that and then when you go into the brush pack it will be there. You can also swipe to the left and then you can share, duplicate or delete this brush. 
This is your smudge tool and basically allows you to smudge the canvas. Here is where you erase and again you can pick which kind of brush you want to erase with. Here is your layers tab. So this plus button is where you add in a layer. You can hide any layers that you wish to. You can also change the layer opacity here by clicking on the end of the layer. You can go if you click onto the layer here you can rename it select copy fill clear alpha lock mask drawing assist invert and reference back onto the n the n stands for normal this is where you could do things like multiply layers screen layers add layers overlays all different kinds of things like this lastly you have your colors I personally love the color feature on Procreate. Also, just remember that you can move this around. So you can go into different hues, different saturations, brightness. You've also got history of your colors that you used and you can add in a color palette here. If I came into this color palette area, then I can set a different color palette as my default. And then when I go back to classic, it is right there for me to easily select. You can also see this in card format, which I think is very, very cute. You also have the disc option when it comes to selecting colors. Next up, you have harmony. If you click onto here, it will come up with different ways of selecting your colors so that they are harmonious together. And then lastly in here, you have value. And that's the end of this tutorial.